on to chapter three on discrete random variables and probability distributions. This chapter serves both as an introduction to uh, random variables and also an introduction to discrete random variables in particular. But many of the concepts that we see here are going to transform, uh, it's, are going to transfer over to the continuous context when we're dealing with continuous random variables. So uh, let's get started. Uh, uh, so in this section, we're going to talk about uh, some random variables. A random variable, which is sometimes abbreviated with the letters RV, is a function taking values from the sample space S and associating numbers with them. Conventional not notation for random variables uses capital letters from the end of the English alphabet, lowercase letters while lowercase letters are usually used to denote a non-random value or outcome so up to this point we have been using lowercase letters for uh, data and when talking about random variables we're going to switch to uppercase uh, variables or uppercase letters uh, and uh, the distinction does somewhat matter um, honestly this is a rule that is very frequently broken although at the same time while I say that, in this class, I'm not planning on breaking that rule all that much. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I break it all the time in, in uh, my research work, but this is a situation where it's probably going, I'm, I'm probably going to stay uh, rather true to it. So there's a difference between a random variable whose outcome is unknown and a possible value that random variable could take. So, uh using the fact that random variables are actually functions like the term random variable is somewhat there's somewhat of a joke that random variables are neither random nor variables because they are uh because random variables are not really variables they're treated as functions and they're not random because if you know what outcome from the sample space you got you know the value of the random variable because the randomness comes not from the random variable x itself, but rather from omega, which is an outcome from the sample space. Uh, so, uh, when, uh, so uh, if omega is an outcome from the sample space, the notation x of omega equals little x can be used to say that the value of the random variable x when the, when the outcome little omega occurs is little x. So little omega, uh, that is a random outcome. Uh, little x is uh, non-random. And x will equal little x when the random outcome omega occurs. All right, so uh, the set of omega such that x of omega is equal to x is the event that an element of s is drawn that causes the random vari variable x to equal little x. Um, and uh, the set of omega such that x of omega is in some other set A, where that other set is often some subset, subset of the real numbers, is the event that an element of S is drawn that causes the random variable x to assume a value that is in the set A. Uh, so technically, when we want to talk about whether a random variable is in a, it takes a value inside of a set or not, this is the notation this is what we should be using for that notation we are asking for the probability that we draw an omega that causes x of omega to be in the set a but that is often rather tedious we would rather just say what is the probability that x is in a that's much simpler random variables are commonly classified as being either discrete or continuous discrete random variables or discrete real valued random variables take values in a finite or countably infinite or innumerable, if you prefer, uh, set with positive probability. So examples of sets that random uh, discrete random variables uh, take their values in could be uh, a finite set of numbers, such as zero or one. Uh, it could be the, the integers. It could be uh, the natural numbers, such as zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, and so on. If it's enumerable, then it could potentially be a discrete random variable. If the set that it falls into is all, any number between 0 and 1, including fractions and including 
um, uh, rational numbers and irrational numbers, any of those numbers, then it's no longer discrete. It's going to be considered continuous. Uh, on the other hand, continuous real value random variables satisfy the following two properties. First, the random variables take values in intervals, which are possibly infinite in length, or disjoint unions of intervals of the real line with positive probability. That's the first pro uh, uh, property that continuous random variables satisfy. The second is that for any constant c and r, the probability that that random variable is equal to c is equal to zero, which is kind of a strange assumption. You're saying that you know that this random variable, this continuous random variable, is going to equal some real number, but you're saying the probability that it equals any real number is equal to zero? Well, for starters, that must be the case because uh, this would be, this is an infinite set, so you need to have some way to assign probabilities. And there's too many numbers in the real number system for uh, numbers in general to have positive probability. And secondly, uh, there's a way that my probability instructor put it. He said, if you, like, you know that someone's going to win the lottery, you just know it's not going to be you. So uh, by that same uh, logic, you know that these random variables will fall inside of an interval. You just don't know what number it will be. You will never know what number it will be. And uh, it's highly, highly, highly unlikely that it will be that particular number you chose. So unlikely that that probability is effectively zero. Uh, perhaps the simplest non-trivial random variable is the Bernoulli random variable. If x is a Bernoulli random variable, then the probability that x equals 1 is equal to 1 minus the probability that x equals 0, which is p. And we say uh, that x follows a Bernoulli distribution with parameter p. That's that's what this we're saying. So we have the random variable x, and this notation means that it comes from some distribution with some parameter. Uh, we're going to leave that... Um, alone that that uh verbiage about distributions alone for a minute that's going to be the subject of the next video uh, so but basically we just say that x is a bernoulli random variable because it has these properties all right so the set s on which x of omega is defined could be really just about anything uh it's natural to think of bernoulli random variables as being equivalent to coin flips or possibly biased coin flips the thing though is you do not have to necessarily have coin flips for example you could have a probability space where there is a coin flip where if you draw heads uh this random variable will evaluate to the number one and if you draw tails or you flip and it lands tails up it will evaluate to zero. That's one possibility to get a fair or balanced uh, Bernoulli random variable where the probability of getting one is 0.5. Alternatively, you could roll a fair die, track whether the result of the die was even or odd, and in the event of an even number of pips, this random variable evaluates to one, and the event of an odd number of pips, this random variable evaluates to zero. Either one of those situations could be the case. And it is statistically impossible to differentiate between these two possible setups for of random variables and the and and uh, sample spaces. So in that case, it's almost as if once you know the distribution of the random variable, you can pretty much forget whatever the original sample space was and any of the properties of that sample space. You can now work in some, you can work as if this uh, random variable were the identity function and its sample space is going to be the real numbers or something, uh, maybe the number zero and one. So uh, in that sense, you almost forget all of that stuff that we talked about before um, I mean, I, okay, I guess you don't forget about it, but you no longer care about the specifics of the sample space and the elements that you're drawing from the sample space. The specifics no longer matter. So uh, we, we get to talk about these things in a very general way. All right, so for the first example, which of the following random variables are likely to be continu uh, considered discrete and which are likely to be considered considered continuous? Describe the space of outcomes the random variable takes 
with positive probability. So for our first case, flip a coin, record one for heads and zero for tails. If this is the situation, the sample space for our experiment would probably be the sample space consisting of heads and tails. And the random variable x when given the outcome h is equal to is equal to one and the random variable x when taken uh, the value tails is going to equal zero. So the space of outcomes, which I will de denote by x of s, where you almost feed the entire sample space into this function x, is going to be the set uh, 0 to 1. By the way, uh, the term for uh, this is this is the image of the sample space s under the, under the random variable x or the function x. All right. Uh, this random variable, since the space in which its outcomes falls is generally, like that's a finite space. There's only two numbers in it. So this random variable would be considered discrete. Okay. Uh, next example, roll a die, record the number of pips showing. So the sample space in this situation would be... Uh, die rolls so we got one uh two three four five and six all right so that's the sample space uh, x of 1 would be equal to 1. x of uh, 2, or 2 pips, would be equal to 2. And you'd kind of keep going on like this for uh, other possibilities. So you could say x when you have 6 pips on your face uh, would be equal to 6. So this is the reason why we didn't want to write down the numbers one through six when talking about die rolls. It makes it easier then to talk about random variables as being a translation from the number of pips showing on a dice face to numbers, actual numbers. And we would like to be able to make that translation. Random variables do not need to be defined on numeric spaces. There doesn't have, it, it, they basically say nothing about whatever's in that original space. They don't care at all what's in that original space. And once you have a random variable, you get to work in the real numbers. And that's really nice. So the image of the sample space under X is going to be the numbers one, two, three, four, five, six. And that suggests, since this, since this is a finite set, that uh, this is a discrete random variable. All right, next example. Uh, roll a die, record one for an even number of pips and negative one for, a, for an odd number of pips. Okay, so the sample space is the same as before. So we're gonna copy, copy that sample space down. So x of one is equal to x of three, which is equal to x of five, In all of these cases, x is going to come out as negative 1 since you have an odd number of pips. Uh, in the case of 2, uh, uh, that's so x evaluated for the dice with 2 pips is going to be the same as when there's 4 pips, which is going to be the same as when there's uh, 6 pips. In all of these situations, the random variable x comes out as 1. So the image of the sample space under this random variable will be negative uh, 1 and 1. And again, this is a discrete random variable. Okay, 
Uh, the time in minutes needed to complete a race. Uh, it seems appropriate to say here that the sample space is going to be some uh, positive real number, which we'll put with the R plus, which will be, which is equal to the set uh, zero to infinity, including zero. And in this case, so it seems like the set, the, uh, the random variable is going to be the identity function where it takes one of the numbers from the space and just spits out that exact same number. So in this case, x of uh, omega is equal to omega, which is in uh, the which is in the uh, positive or non-negative real numbers. So that means that the image of the sample space under x is going to be the positive real numbers or the non-negative real numbers, and this is a continuous space. So this is going to be a continuous random variable. And basically what we're saying is uh, the time it takes to complete the race can be any number from zero to infinity, uh, not just integers, but also including fractions and uh, algebraic numbers and transcendental numbers, every single possible real number. And since the real numbers are an uncountable space, that means that this random variable is going to be continuous. Uh, for similar reasons, number five, the length in centimeters of a hair plucked from a person's head. Uh, we could say um, that the sample space is going to be uh, hairs. No, 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 not X, sorry. The sample space will consist of hairs. And the, a random variable x from that sample space, which I'm going to draw a hair. <laughs> OK, that's the thing. All right, uh, so x, when given a hair, uh, gives you uh, a number, so the length of the hair. And so it suggests that the image of the sample space under X is going to be the positive real numbers or the non-negative real numbers again, since hairs can be in principle of any length and it's an uncountable length. So, I mean, idea, all right, it's, it's gonna be true that there's a finite number of hairs in the world and therefore a finite number of hair lengths. So if we were being super, super duper technical, we would say actually this is a discrete random variable because there's only a finite number of possible hair lengths since there's only a finite number of hairs. But that seems ridiculous. That seems like a ridiculous model. That seems like way too much complication. Continuous random variables are continuous because it's easier to work with continuous things than discrete things. And you're probably going to agree with that when we start doing all the work for the discrete random variables and all the work for the continuous random variables and say, oh, it's actually not, it's actually somewhat easier to work with continuous stuff. So... Uh, we're going to say that it's the real numbers, in which case this is a continuous random variable. Okay, uh, next up, roll two dice. Record the sum of the number of pips showing. Uh, I'm not going to bother writing out the sample space, but I'm going to say that uh, x could be, like say, if you gave x the numbers uh, 1 and 4, it's going to add up the pips showing on those two dice and give you the result five. So the image of X under the sample space is going to be the numbers from two to 12. And since this is a finite set, this is going to be uh, discrete. Okay, next up, flip a coin until H is seen and count the number of flips. So the sample space consists of heads, tails, heads, tails, tails, heads, uh, and so on. So the so the random variable x, when given one of these uh, strings, let's say tails, tails, heads, uh, is going to evaluate to the, to the length of the string, which means that uh, x, when fed this sample space, its image is going to be the natural numbers, which are the numbers uh, one, two, three, and so on. And this is a discrete space because the because there's an innumerable amount of numbers in this space. 
And since it's enumerable, that means it's going to be discrete. So this is a discrete sample. Uh, this is a discrete random variable. By the way, if you're not familiar with the word enumerable, that means listable, as in you can list it out. And even though it will take you an infinite number of years to list out everything in this sample space or in this uh, set, there will it, you will hit everything in that set a in finite time. So every possibility, the same cannot be said for the real numbers. By the way. If, even if given infinite number of years, you will not hit every value if you started trying to list them out. So uh, that's actually a very deep result in set theory, or I don't know about, I don't know if deep's quite the right word for it, but it's certainly an important result. So uh, we're just gonna take it for granted here that that is the case. Uh, example two, consider an experiment of rolling two six-sided die, define two random variables for this experiment. Are they continuous or discrete? We can define multiple random variables for the same sample space, and there are advantages to doing so, because when doing so, we can talk about notions such as correlation, or study the behavior of different random variables in the same space, um, consider different possibilities, uh, I'll talk about their joint distribution together, uh, stuff like that. So uh, as a reminder, the sample space consists of dice faces, so we could have, for example, one, one, uh, one, two, and we would keep going on like this. You've seen in previous videos how to do this until eventually we listed out uh, six, six. Okay, so this is our sample space. Uh, what's one random variable we could define? We could say that X, the random variable X when given some outcome omega in the sample space is equal to the sum of the pips. Whereas if we gave, uh, no, let's not call the other random variable x, we'll call it y, that y will be another random variable defined on this space, and it will be the max of the pips. So, for example, uh, x of the dice face uh, of the combination 1 and 2 will equal 3, because that's the sum, whereas y of one and two will equal two because the maximum of the two uh, of the number of pips is going to be two. Okay, so that's it for this section. This was the basic introduction into what.